welcome to Power Factor. I'm Larry, and it's been a long while since I've been in front of the camera, and uh, good to be back here doing another episode for you. It's also been a long time since I've done any shooting. I've been real busy at work, traveling to the East Coast a couple times over the last uh, couple of months, and just been pretty crazy busy here. So um, uh, I've got an interesting episode for you. This is not shooting videos. It's not hey, this is me shooting carry optics again. Um, this time um, I'm here to answer a technical question. And, and, and it came from um, listening to the Triangle Tactical Q&A show, which if you guys um, are not familiar with Triangle Tactical, they've got a main podcast that comes out, I think it's Mondays or Sundays, and then um, uh, a very short five-minute episode every day of the week. And it's really, really a good show. Um, Lucas, uh, the host of the show, does a great job. He's got a great uh, voice, puts up some good um, uh, answers to the questions, um, you know, and he's been shooting for something like five years or something like that, and I really enjoy the show. Uh, it's got a good perspective on a lot of things. So if you haven't heard of them, check it out. Um, so anyway, there was a, a little while back, there was a, a caller that asked about leaning around barricades. Now, check, clear weapon, no mag. Um, so, and, and Lucas, uh, the, the, I think the question was, you know, when, when you're leaning around a barricade IDPA, um, you know, do you, do you cant the gun or do you attempt to hold it vertical and upright? Even though you're leaning out, do you attempt to keep your sight picture, your gun upright? Or what's more comfortable, do you tilt the gun? And um, Lucas had a good answer, you know, I don't know, let me check, and kind of videotaped himself and f found that he holds the gun at somewhat, some uh, bit of an angle and just kind of citing that it's a little bit more comfortable doing that and that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, and it sparked a question in my mind. I'm not trying to answer a question that wasn't answered. It just, it kind of sent me down the rabbit hole saying, well, for the longest time, I've been curious um, about what effect on your bullet impact does it have when you're canting the gun. Um, and I've, I've always been kind of too lazy to answer the question until listening to that episode and it kind of sparked a little uh, thing in me. I said, you know what, I'm going to answer this for myself once and for all. And, and again, that's not the question that the, that the listener asked on the other, on the other show, but uh, I'm here to present the question and then answer it for you. So why, why would there be a difference? Well, I've got my, my analog gun here. This is a 3060 triangle. Um, and so let's say the top surface represents your, your, your sight alignment, right? Your sights are aligned here, and I'm looking down the sights. This surface here represents your barrel. So we know through physics that in order to, um, let's, and, and let's, let's say we're, our, our target is completely horizontal, it's at the same elevation as our sight picture. We're not trying to do anything downhill or uphill, but totally flat shooting here. Um, in order for the bullet to get to the target, we have to lob the bullet upward, just like when you throw a football. You know, you don't see you don't see the quarterback throw the football completely dead straight unless the guy's two yards away, right? But if he's got any kind of distance, he's got to he's got to throw it. Even if he throws it very very fast and very hard, there's gonna be some kind of arc, some kind of trajectory. He's gonna have to throw it up in order to get it to that to that receiver that's 10 yards away or more, right? Um, sometimes a lot more, in which case they have to throw it really high. So, so, you know, we have to establish, first of all, that you have to understand that we are lobbing the bullet upward. Very slight angle. This is, a, this is an extreme, you know, example, but at a very slight angle, we're lobbing the bullet upward in order for it to come back down and hit that point of aim, point of impact when we're at the point that we uh, sight in and we zero our sights or zero our scopes. Um, so why does it matter if I turn, if I can't the gun, if I'm leaning around a barricade and I can't the gun? Well, I mean, take, take the most extreme example. The most extreme example would be sideways, right? So it, when the gun's upright, 
again, we're lobbing the, the bullet upward, but side to side, we're square. We're, we're neither left nor right. We're right down the middle. Now, if we turn the gun completely 90 degrees sideways, now we've, we've totally turned that on its head now. As far as up and down goes, the barrel here is flat. So as the bullet exits, it's not being thrown upward anymore against gravity. It's coming out of the, out of the gun barrel flat, and it, as soon as it leaves the gun barrel, gravity is going to immediately start taking that bullet down. In addition, as you see, when our barrel is at an up angle, when I turn the gun this way, now we're at an angle that is, you know, if I'm around a left barricade, it's throwing the bullet farther left than my sights. So um, that is the question that I've had in my mind for a long time and finally uh, decided to answer. So um, we're going to do a bit of high school physics to come up with the answer to that question and find out, does it matter? How much does it matter when I can't the gun left, right, or some extreme angles? And, um, and, and we'll come up with some, some hard numbers and you decide based on your bullet velocity based on your um, uh, zero distance, how much does it matter? And we'll run through a few examples and all I gotta do is plug in a few numbers, change a few numbers, and we'll kind of watch the results happen um, in the spreadsheet. So come along, check it out. Here's a little spreadsheet I came up with. Um, there's some physics formulas here. I'm not gonna get into them. If, if you know what you're looking at, great. If not, just trust me on this. So um, this little chart here is essentially your trajectory, your bullet trajectory, um, holding the gun upright, as it says. And then up here in the upper left corner, I can change some numbers around. So currently I have uh, my muzzle velocity at 1,100 feet per second, and I have a zero distance of 60 feet, so that's 20 yards. And as you can see here, we cross we cross the x-axis again at 60 feet. So that's what the formula is telling us there. And as, as the bullet travels, um, as the bullet leaves the gun, as we said, as you can see here, it's rising. And then, you know, halfway there, it begins to fall again and crosses, uh, passes through the target at 60 feet. That's the distance that we're zeroed at. Um, so what is that angle? Here's the angle right here. Let me highlight that for you. Uh, 0 0.045 degrees. It's not a lot, is it? It's not a lot. It doesn't take much at these high velocities to get uh, to hit that target at 20 yards. Doesn't take much angle, uh, but there's a bit of an angle. And then, uh, as you can see, the trajectory continues to trail off as gravity affects the bullet path. And um, and then we we're, if the target was further out, we'd be hitting lower and lower. Um, also note that if the target was closer than our zero, we would be hitting a bit high. So, you know, imagine that you're you know the shooter's to your left here, and the target's to the right, and the bullet's traveling from left to right, and you're standing, you know, off to the side, and you're watching the bullet path. This is the path that you would see. So. Um, so again, you know, the, the, the bullet's rising out of the gun and then coming down and falling down um, past the zero and, and below, below the horizontal, below the level, the elevation that we fired it from as we go beyond our zero. So anywhere I would slice this, uh, if you put a vertical slice through that and call that the target, that's, that's where it's going to hit. Um, the maximum height reached I've calculated is over here and I've got it converted into inches. In this case, again, I've got 1,100 feet per second as an example and uh, a zero distance of 60 feet um, and, and the maximum bullet rise is 0.14 inch. Not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, it's just a little more than an eighth of an inch uh, to translate that for you to something that you can, uh, that you can grasp. Uh, that right there is a little more than eighth of an inch. Uh, it's approaching a sixth of an inch, if you will, but you know we don't deal with six. You know, an eighth of an inch is a common, commonly known uh, uh, quantity there. So from this page here, I can show you um, what would happen with different zero distances. So you know, this is like a, 
I don't know, 1,100 feet per second. Um, for the load, I'm trying to make up for my, uh, my, my 40 open gun with a 155 grain bullet, 1,100 feet per second would be just great. Um, but what if I zero at 75 feet? And let's see what happens. So my charts changed around. This is auto scaling, so no big deal. Don't rely on the visual, you know, shape of it so much because it auto scales. But now, in order to zero at 75 feet or 25 yards, we have to we have to increase the angle of the barrel. And uh, my maximum height reach is 0.22 inch. So now, instead of an eighth of an inch, instead of a little more than an eighth, and an eighth of an inch, now I'm a little more than 3 sixteenths, or a little bit under a quarter inch. So again, we have to we have to angle that barrel up steeper and steeper. What if I want to zero at 100 feet? So now now that bullet reaches 0.4 inches in height, and and again the 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 angle has to get even steeper. How do we make our, our, our barrel angle steeper, we adjust our sights, right? So if you raise your rear sight, um, essentially what you're doing, your sight picture remains the same. Essentially what you're doing is you're dropping the back end of your gun, which increases the angle on your barrel. So that's uh, some of the effects there. So let's go back to 75 feet, and I'll just give you a few examples. What if we're shooting... Um, 45 ACP at 800 feet per second. Um, you're probably having to lob that thing. Your angle here is 0.1 of a degree, as you can see here, and 0.43 would be the maximum height the bullet would reach in that parabolic path halfway to the target. Um, you know, what if you're, uh, you know, we got whatever, 850. Here's an example for you real quick, .38. What if you're shooting one of these uh, 38 Super 9mm open guns? Say you're at 1400. .03 is your angle instead of .1 like on the 45 ACP. And with that slight barrel angle, uh, you're at .13 inch. Again, right down getting close to that eighth of an inch um, if you're zeroed at 75 feet. What if you zeroed at 15 yards with that open gun, 45 feet, 0.04 inch? So now we're really flat trajectory there, um, you know, or rather really flat uh, in terms of bullet rise between you and your zero distance at 15 yards. So this kind of gives you some examples of um, of some numbers that um, you may be uh, experiencing, or or that may, might might fit your case rather. Um, notice over here, this triangle just represents um, the 1400 is the, my input here, and we break that into, in physics you break that into a horizontal component and then a vertical component. So uh, the vertical component, the vertical velocity is only a half, in this case, only a half of feet per second, and the horizontal is less than 1400 but it rounds up to 1400 it's so close uh, to 1400 in that case so um, that is a look at you know again the pistols upright there's a few different uh, velocities that we can play with and a few different uh, zero distances that we can play with and you can see the effect on the target. The target distance doesn't come into play until we get to our next screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers with me and plunk them right over here on this page here. Now I've also got, just so you guys know, um, as you can see all the different tabs here, um, you know, the pistol at 45 degree angle. So I've got my, my triangle at the top here that represents the uh, the the vertical plane and this triangle down here represents the horizontal plane. I'm not going to get too much into it. Um, the pistol sideways again, the vertical plane, which in this case angle is zero, obviously, which we just shown on the when I was standing in front of the camera. If you have your gun completely 90 degrees sideways, your up angle is zero, and um, in this case your um, your sideways angle. 0.021 equals the same angle that the gun was when it was vertical. It was just in the vertical plane. 
So if we go sideways, now that, that same angle that is between your sight plane and your barrel axis is the same angle right there, just so you've got it in the horizontal plane now. So that's what these little tabs are. Beyond that, I'm not going to get into um, um, what they are, other, other than to say that notice here that my maximum height reached when the pistol sideways is zero. It doesn't go any higher than the line of sight. Um, and further, if we go beyond zero, I did a full circle here just to be the most extreme, you know, all the way around. Um, you know, as we go beyond zero, we are, you know, the bullet leaves the gun, drops very fast. If the pistol is completely upside down, it drops even faster. And all of this culminates to this page right here, which is, um, which is really what it gets down to. So let's go back to my... Let's start over with my 1100 feet per second and my 75 foot zero. So I'm aiming right here at the top. I'm always aiming right here at the crosshair between this X axis and the Y axis. Where the two axes cross in this example, in this, in this, the way this um, spreadsheet is built, that is always your point of aim. So, as you can see right here, um, my point of aim and my point of impact, the red dot is my point of impact. When the pistol is perfectly upright, it hits on the crosshair of the X and Y axis. That's how it's, that's, that's what we're doing when we're zeroing the gun. We're saying that that's where I hit. Now let's just change Keep everything the same, but let's move the target closer to us. So remember the parabolic path. The bullet is, is, has left the gun and has gone up, and it only crosses that same, that same plane, that same elevation, um, when it gets to our zero distance. So what happens when we bring the target closer to us, say 60 feet? What's going to happen? Point of impact is going to go up, right? So there it is. So we're still aiming right here where my mouse is at, my pointer's at, but my target's closer to me, my, my impact's gonna be high. In this case, 0.17 inch high is all. It's, you know, 3 sixteenths of an inch at best. Um, does it make much of a difference to you? Maybe not, but you know, this is, we're, we're gonna go through the math, we're gonna go through the actual numbers, and you get to decide whether it makes a difference for you or not in your situation. Um, what if I was shooting a target at 100 feet? Well, my, my impact's going to be low. Here's my impact, even though I was aiming up here, right? So recall that first tab here as we get beyond our, our, uh, our zero distances right here. As we go, as the targets push further than our zero, then our impacts are going to be low. So back to here. Um, back to my, my circle here. So um, in this case, let's go back to my same point of aim, point of impact. I'm, I'm shooting a target at my zero distance of, of 25 yards or 75 feet. Oh, and I have a muzzle velocity of 1,000. Doesn't matter. I thought I put 1,100, but whatever. Um, so remember, in this exercise, we're always aiming right here at the crosshair of the X and Y axis. So what happens when you turn your gun 45 degrees to the left or the right? Well, I'm aiming here, I'm aiming right here, but my impact is over here. And remember, that's because, now we're not throwing the bullet quite as high because um, our, our barrel angle is, is, has been reduced, our vertical angle has been reduced, and but gravity acts the same. Right? Gravity's acting the same on that bullet and pulling it down at the same rate it would anyway. So if we're throwing it up at a lower velocity than we were when the gun was upright, then our impact is going to be low. And also as I showed as I showed you when I was holding the triangle there in front of the camera, we're also throwing the bullet out sideways to the direction that we're leaning. So um, in terms of your in terms of your sights, it would be above your sights. Um, um, or you know, further above the top of your gun in whatever angle that you're leaning. So since we've, we're aiming here and we've got the gun canted at 45 degrees, my, my bullet impact is right here. And you can see the, the, uh, the coordinates of that being um, 0.77 inch, that's three quarters of an inch, 
out to the right and uh, 0.3 inch low in that case. Now, and then the same thing's mirrored over to the other side. So again, now if I'm aiming here, let's say the gun was 90 degrees. That's a pretty extreme angle, but let's say the gun was totally 90 degrees over. The bullet's leaving the gun, it has no upward velocity, so gravity just immediately begins pulling it down below the plane, the sight plane, the elevation of the sights. So we're gonna impact even lower, right? And then again, that bullet angle, or rather the barrel angle, is even more to the side. So we're gonna hit further out and we're gonna hit further down. That's this point right here. So again, I'm aiming up here. My, my bullet impact is down here. And in this case with a 75 foot zero at 1,000 feet per second, I'm hitting more than an inch off to the right if I'm leaning out to the right <clears throat> and um, a little more than an inch low in this case. So, um, and then I've got even more extreme examples here if your gun was 45 degrees below the horizontal and then completely upside down. Now this is ridiculous unless you're maybe riding some kind of contraption and shooting on top shot. Um, not many of us have had that opportunity and never will, right? But, um, um, but generally, as you saw me leaning there in the camera, I think 45 degrees is one of the most extreme angles that you're going to see um, in a lot of competitions. So keep in mind as you're as you're leaning around those barricades in IDPA or or if USPSA course design forces you to lean around a barricade um, without getting a foot fault to, to get that hard to hard to get target, your bullet impact is going to be somewhere up here in this zone here. Um, so that is pretty much you know these top two numbers here if you're upright this is your zero angle when you're upright 45 degrees left or right from vertical is here so if you're looking at this table which you should be um, these are the numbers you're mostly going to be concerned about if you're you know if you think you find yourself in a situation where you know you've got your trigger guard braced against a barricade and you're further than 45 degrees then you might want to look further down this chart out to the 90 degree, which would be the top half of this point of impact circle. Um, but your bullets are gonna be out there somewhere. Uh, again, I don't expect anybody's gonna be shooting upside down too much, but um, just for mathematical purposes, it's I just completed the circle and it's, and it's on there because I found it interesting. So um, I put out there on Facebook just a, just a day ago or so and uh, uh, didn't give myself a whole lot of time to get any responses, but um, I got a couple. Um, and we're, we've got uh, some examples down here. And I, as I said, I'll, I'll answer for you um, what your situation might be. So let's say your zero distance is 20 yards, 60 feet. Thanks, Ray, for the, uh, for the info on your load. And you're shooting 1390 feet per second. And let's just put our target at our zero distance. So our point of impact and point of aim is right here, again, at the XY axis uh, at the origin. So Ray, if you've got your gun canted 45 degrees, you're gonna impact a quarter inch out to the side, and you're gonna be a tenth of an inch low. Is that a big deal for you when you're shooting a target at 20 yards? You decide. But uh, suppose your target is now at 25 yards, Ray. So again, that cone, this bullets, these these you know these eight points around this circle. Think of it as a cone. It's emanating from the barrel as I shoot eight bullets and I rotate the gun from side to side all the way around the circle, always keeping my sights aimed at the XY axis origin way up here. Um, and that cone flares out from the gun. I'm throwing the bullet right when I'm canted right. I'm throwing the bullet left when I'm canted left. The bullet lobs upward when I'm upright and everything everything all the way around this circle. and But now I push the target out farther. So obviously that cone of effect gets larger, right? as we get farther from the gun. So here you go, at 25 yards, you're about um, getting close to a third of an inch right and about a quarter inch low. Um, you know, push. what if we're shooting a 50 yard target, 150 feet, 
Bam. Now we're hitting way low. Look at that. I mean, even, even when our pistol's upright, we're uh, 1.3 inches low, um, just with the pistol upright. And even more so if we got the gun canted somehow at 1.6 inches low and about 0.6 inches off to the right if you're canted out there at 45 degrees. So it doesn't sound like... Those don't sound like really big numbers, but keep in mind, Ray's velocity is very, very high. This is an open gun shooting 9mm, um, and that's a very high velocity. So let's just change one number, and let's start back to the beginning here, and let's change one number, and let's say that this is our 45 ACP. Whoops, how about 800? You guys aren't shooting that slow, right? How about 800? And we'll do an 850 also, but... Um, 800 feet per second, um, you're shooting uh, at 45 degrees. Now, again, your point of aim, point of impact, same place where target right here is the same distance as our zero, 60 feet or 20 yards. And right here, um, canted at 45 degrees, you're about three quarters of an inch, a little over three quarters of an inch off to the right, and about a third of an inch low. Um, and that's just, that's the target is at the same distance that you zeroed. So let's start pushing that target out 75 feet. And we're getting, you know, we're lobbing that bullet out to the side by almost an inch. And we're, we're hitting low by about three quarters of an inch. Um, you know, let's go the most extreme. We see some 50 yard targets every now and then. So you got your gun upright, you're hitting four inches low. You see that? Remember, you're aiming up here. You're hitting down here because you zeroed. You zeroed your gun at uh, 20 yards. Now we're shooting at 50 yards. You're hitting four inches low with the gun upright, and even lower if you got the gun canted, 4.8 inches low, and then almost two inches off to the right. Um, so, you know, watch out for that. When you got these low velocities, uh, we can push that up to 850. And see where it takes us. Now we're now we're 3.6 inches low, and at 45 degrees, we're out there at 4.3 low, and about an inch and three quarter off to the side. So this is this is something to think about, you know. And you're not going to be calculating this on the fly, you know, like oh, that's where I want to hit. So let me move my sight picture a quarter inch. You're not thinking about that, but just conceptually know. I want you to realize what's what's happening uh, to your bullet path. Uh, your point of aim, point of impact, um, as you go in and out from your zero, and then also as you cant the gun left and right. Um, there's a couple other examples here. Um, you know, Rick says he's zeroed at uh, at 25 yards or 75 feet, and he gave me a a uh, 800 velocity. So um, at 50 yards, Rick, you're about 3.3 inches low when the gun's upright, you know. Uh, let's look at this out here. Um, 4.3 inches low if you're canting the gun off to the side, and about 2.5 inches off to the side if you're canting at a 45 degree. Um, again, I keep harping on this. Remember, your, your sights are right here. Your sights are right here at the crossing of the X and Y axis, and your bullet's impacting way down here if you're canted at 45 degrees. So make sure you, uh, I just wanna make sure that's absolutely clear. You're not aiming here. You're aiming way up here. Um, so, um, and I, I put some numbers in here for myself as well. 975 feet per second. Um, that's, a, that's a nice uh, minor load for my carry optics gun. Um, with a 135 grain bullet, and um, you know, and I'm zeroed at 25 actually on that on my on my Trigicon RMR. So at uh, when the target's at my zero distance, you know, for my load, I'm out here at um, a little over three quarters of an inch off to the right, and about a third of an inch low if I'm canted at, at uh, 45 degrees. So, you know, what would be the effect if I was zeroed at 15 yards? 45. But I'm still shooting that 25-yard target. Remember, that cone of effect spreads as the target itself goes farther and farther out, and the, and the bullet path intersects with the target. So here I'm, here I'm 0.65 low, 
and about half inch off to the right. So there's, you know, interesting numbers there for you. Um, the effect of your zero distance, your target distance, and your muzzle velocity. Those are the three things that, that weigh in on this uh, little exercise. All right, so there's a little exercise. Kind of shows you some of the physics. Again, this is just high school physics. Um, you know, most high school uh, AP advanced, you know, or honors type kids that are in physics can, you know, do this all day long. Um, the one thing I want to mention, though, is that this assumes, this is your sight plane, this assumes that the bullet begins its trajectory at the sight plane, right? So on my, my, my parabolic trajectory, when the gun is upright, the bullet path begins at the x-axis at zero. What about, what about your sight height? You know, your, your iron sights are a half an inch above the center of the bore, thereabouts. What if you're shooting an open gun with an upright Seymour scope and now you're talking an inch and a half over the bore, maybe even two? Um, that definitely comes into play. So the effect there is that, you know, when we zero the gun, we're saying we want the bullet impact at a certain distance to be on my sight plane, right? It's all about the sight plane. You know, the gun can do whatever the gun's going to do at different angles or whatever, but it's the sight plane that's really your fixed point of reference. So the effect is, if, you've, if you're talking about sight height, the effect is that your bullet trajectory begins below zero, but it still ends up at the x-axis, at the plane, at the sight plane. So I did not build that into my spreadsheet. So there is, you know, it's not absolutely perfect. I can't tell you for certain your bullet's going to hit at 0.35 inches to the right and, you know, 0.38 inches low, whatever, because I don't know the height of your sights and I didn't build that in. Is it possible? Yeah, it's totally possible. It's just another, another uh, level of geometry. Uh, the easy version is when the gun's upright. You know, all I got to do is is uh, you know say the path begins below zero and then in order to get my bullet back to the zero then my angle's got to change a little bit because I got to get it up higher. Um, that's fairly simple to do when when the gun's upright. When it's canted 45 then I have to start kind of figuring well now my my sight height is is in this direction it's not in the vertical direction so it's totally doable. Um, I just finished this thing a few days ago, and I thought of that, and I didn't um, build it into the spreadsheet. But again, the, the whole point of this was to kind of illustrate the concept of what's happening when my, my point of aim, my point of impact, my point of aim doesn't change. My gun's turning. My point of aim is not changing. I'm still aiming at the same spot but my bullet impact is going to be dramatically um, altered based on, you know, the, the barrel uh, lobbing the bullet, you know, from below the sights to above the sights. Now, you know, is that in a vertical plane, is it in a horizontal plane, or somewhere in between? We've just shown that um, in the, uh, in the uh, little exercise, little spreadsheet I built. If you guys are interested um, to, in, in having a copy of this, I'm, I'm willing to give it to you. Just uh, you know, shoot us an email um, here on the show, and we'll uh, we'll do that. I don't think um, I've got any much else to say about the topic. Again, just kind of thanks to uh, to uh, Luke at Triangle Tactical for kind of giving me the idea. Um, I enjoy your show and uh, um, appreciate what you do over there at Triangle Tactical. We miss Ben on the show, but you know you're doing great on your own. Um, so. From all of us at Power Factor, again, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you like us on Facebook. We're like two likes away from 2,000. I mean, we've got way more subscribers than that on YouTube, 15,000 or more, I don't know, whatever it is. But uh, 
Um, only like 2,000 likes on Facebook. So like us on Facebook, please. Um, you'll get little things like this every once in a while where we put a little something out to our listeners. Hey, you know, um, if you want to participate in, in, in this exercise, you know, comment on this thread and we'll involve you and we'll, we'll answer the question for you with your particular load, uh, for example, in this case. Um, so like us on Facebook, see our website, powerfactorshow.com. Um, there is a little filter thing on there. If you, you want to come to our site and you want to search for any kind of topic, just punch it in there. You want to learn about uh, hand loading or reloading, you know, um, we've got tons of videos on reloading. If you want to learn about IDPA, we've got plenty of that. Multi-gun, plenty of that. USPSA, obviously. Carry optics, if you want to see um, my my little bit of progression through carry optics in the first year, this only launched a year ago. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I like the division. Um, I think it's good for the sport. Um, incidentally, now, as of like right now, we have PCC. We'll address that later. I've got some friends that are already shooting it, and we'll, we'll maybe bring them on to talk about it. Um, but anyway, our website, you can filter on any topic you want and zero in, home in on episodes that we've done on your particular topic. And if you find that we haven't answered your question, or maybe the episode's five years old and, it, and, and, and the rules are outdated and you've got some questions about the current rules, Email us, please, uh, powerfactorshow at gmail.com. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, Taylor Freelance, Rainier Ballistics, Hodgson Powder, JPL Precision. Um, a special thanks to glocktriggers.com, liking the uh, edge trigger a lot, um, so appreciate that. And what else? I think that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.